welcome to the Bible study hour. We are so pleased that we can join you again for the study of God's word. And we are starting a new quarter. It's a new set of lessons. We are studying the book of Ephesians. And believe me, you are going to be happy studying this because there's so much in it for us. I am pleased to know that we have our pastors with me. I am Lorna Stevenson, but I have here on my left, Pastor James Sunlin, and on my right, Pastor Alden Mort. As we go through this study, we hope that you will be able to utilize as best as possible your study guide, that's your Sabbath school lesson quarterly. And if you don't have that yet, that's all right. Just get your Bible ready because that's what we'll be using as our main reference. We are glad to know that we still have our sponsors with us too, Easy Deal Auto Sales and Tours Limited. And we have all those who have been supportive of this particular lesson that we have, this particular study that we go through on a weekly basis, we are happy to know that, but more so that God is still with us. And before we start our discussion of the lesson, I invite you to join us as we connect with God. Let us pray, our Heavenly Father, how grateful we are that you have given us another opportunity to study your words. We thank you for your special blessings upon us. We thank you for your Holy Spirit's guidance in our lives. And even now, as we open your words to study and to share with our viewers, we ask that you will be with us, give us understanding, and use us for your glory. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. So we look at lesson number one, which is captioned, Paul and the Ephesians. Paul and the Ephesians, because it is understood, it's accepted that Paul was the writer of the book of Ephesians. But there were certain encounters which took place with Paul and the Ephesian people. So that we need to have that as a background so although we're studying the book of Ephesians, we are going to get some of the background from elsewhere. Yes. Our memory text, however, is from Ephesians. So as we look at Ephesians chapter 1, verses 9 and 10, we will see what is being said to us there about Paul and the Ephesians. Let's go together. Making, Making known, known to us, us the, the mystery of his will, will according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. Now, pastors, I'm just going to ask you, from this memory text, in a very brief way, say what you see there as the theme or the emphasis for this study. I'm seeing here where Christ is being put at the center of everything. Paul seemed to be saying that the mystery of our journey in walking with the Lord finds its fulfillment, its, its revelation, its, its whole uh, completeness in Christ. Yes. Everything that happens is in Christ. Good. You know, Paul had been away for some time from the, the church in Ephesus. And so he wrote to them, wanted, wanted to ignite their faith and their devotion to God. And he said to them, you know, in a loving way that, you know, making known to us the mystery of his will. And so he, he, he carried them back and he, he wanted to carry them back to Christ because Christ is the center of the gospel and Christ is the center of his letter also. Thank you. And as you refer there to Paul being away from them and he was writing because this is an epistle that Paul wrote to the Ephesian brethren. And this was written 
as we follow the whole history and layout of Paul's experiences, it was written while he was in Rome. Okay, now, in addition to the fact that we are looking at that as a letter, it is important that we get a certain kind of a background from where we are coming, mm -hmm. where Paul is associated with the Ephesian brethren and with the city of Ephesus and with his beginnings there and what took place. So when we look at Paul, evangelist to Ephesus, we are looking at Paul starting his, his experience yes. with the Ephesians. That's right. All right. So let's go to Acts chapter 18 because that's where we are going to find the account. That's where we are going to find what happened with Paul and Ephesus and the Ephesians. So in chapter 18 of the book of Acts, we look at verses 18 to 21 to start. And Paul, after this, tarried there yet a good while, and then took his leave of the brethren and sailed thence into Syria, and with him Priscilla and Aquila, having shorn his head in sentry, for he had a vow. And he came to Ephesus and left them there, but he himself entered into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. When they, decide, when they desired him to tarry longer time with them, he consented not, but bade them farewell, saying, I must by all means keep this feast that cometh in Jerusalem, but I will return again unto you, if God will. And he sailed from Ephesus. Okay, Pastor Sunlin, you can just give us a little backdrop there of what's happening. Notice that Paul is there. And he has stopped, but he doesn't intend to stop long. Not One of the all. nice things, though, is that he promised them that he would come back. But what that's, is happening? That's right. What's his movement like? So, so here's Paul. He, he tarried there for a little while um, in Syria, in, 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 in uh, Antioch. Then he sailed to Syria, sailed to Ephesus. Now, while he was in Ephesus, um, having reasoned with the Jews in the synagogue, uh, they wanted, uh, the, the believers there wanted him to stay for a little longer time. But he was not willing to spend a lot of time there. So he decided that, you know, I'm going to go to Jerusalem. I must go to the feast, the Passover, but I'm going to return. So it was like a short visit just to see how they're doing and that he would get back to them, of course. And, and he left with the hope that he would by God's grace, see them again. Right, and our studies tell us that he did return. So, yes, Pastor Mort, we are going to be looking now at Acts chapter 19, and we'll take verses 13 to 15, because this is on his return. Yes. And it says, Then certain of the vagabond Jews, the exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirit, the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, we adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preacheth. And they were seven sons of one Siva, a Jew, a chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are he? It's a very interesting story. I always smile when I read this account because I can imagine what was happening there, especially with that question asked at the end there. Yes. But before we even comment on that, let me just read a little bit more from the same chapter mm -hmm. as I look now at verses 17 to 20. It says, and this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus, and fear fell on them all. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And many that believed came and confessed, sh showed their deeds. Many of them also, which used curious arts, brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. 
so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. A quick look at this, sec this section of Paul's encounter with the Ephesians. One of the most interesting things that I found here is that here are some Jewish followers, Jewish believers, mm -hmm. who claim to be truly connected to Christ. All right, so you're talking about church people, Pastor. Yeah, we're talking about church people. All right, people. Go, go ahead. And yet, they are somehow working with Satan. They are exorcists, you know. And of course, we know that Jesus could be also seen as an exorcist. Paul could be seen as an exorcist. Because being, being that is basically in the name of Jesus, rebuking the demons. But how are you going to rebuke the demons if you are working with the For demons? The demons. <laughs> yes. It just can't work. So these seven sons of Sceva were not converted. They were not truly connected to God, but they were appearing to do the work of the Lord. And Satan says, it can't work. You are working for me. Who are you going to fight against me? And of course, we know that um, the man that was possessed by the evil spirit leaped upon them and caused great damage so that they ran out of the place. Naked. <laughs> Naked. Yes. You know, we have to be careful how we try to mix God and evil. It doesn't work. But it does seem here that even with that happening, you would think that it would just throw cold water on the whole situation. Mm -hmm. But it had a rich positive effect on the whole ministry of Paul. That's right. Because as we read early on, Pastor Mott, what happened? Um, the people turned, go ahead. To, to, they, they turned to, to Christ and also they destroyed the books and all that. But I, I just want to emphasize that, as you said, that Paul would return. Mm -hmm. So on his third missionary journey, Paul returned and he spent three years with them doing ministry, you know, talking, fellowship, because Ephesus was the fourth, one of the, the fourth largest town in Rome. And, you know, it, a lot of persons lived there. It was an urban area. And so, you know, the ministry, you know, and not only that, but it was urban, but they were, you know, as if, you know, they were Eden persons. Uh, they worship false gods. They practice, you know, some person will say Obi and all that. And so Paul started the ministry in there. And the impact that, you know, that it took, Christ was exalted. Christ, the church was moving. And, and you see that Paul, as an evangelist, working in Ephesus and create a big impact. Yes, and I'm going back to the question I'd asked early on. The incident yes. that took place with those seven sons of Sceva mm -hmm. and what happened to them yes. was also very impactful yes. on the ministry of Paul. <laughs> That's right. Because when people saw and those who didn't see heard mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of what had happened, they say, well, what Paul is doing is the right thing. must yes. be the, the right, right thing. thing. Mm -hmm. Jesus, I, I know. know. Paul, I, I know. know. But, but who are you? Why are you interfering <laughs> with what does not really belong to you because mm -hmm. your thoughts are not there? Mm -hmm. So in other words, Satan knows who belong to him yes. and who belong to God. Of mm -hmm. course. And so I like what verse 20 says, That's so right. mightily, mightily grew the grew. word of God mm -hmm. and prevailed. And it was because of that incident yes. that, you know, it, it, it acted as a kind of a propelling force That's right. to That's what right. Paul was doing. That's right. God used uh, these situations to exalt his name. But it's like a roller coaster. Up, down, up, down, because when that happened and all of, you know, the people decided, these, all of these people decided now they are going to turn to mm -hmm. Paul's God. Yes. And they are going to accept the message of Jesus. Then something else happened. That's right. So as we go over and we consider some more, let's look at the same chapter, chapter 19 of Acts. And we are going to be looking at verses 29 to 34 now. And the whole city was filled with confusion. Mm. And having caught Gaius and Aristarchus, men of Macedonia, Paul's companions in travel, they rushed with one accord into the theater. And when Paul would have 
entered in unto the people, the disciples suffered him not. And certain of the chief of Asia, which were his friends, sent unto him, desiring him that he would not adventure himself into the theater. Some therefore cried one thing, and some another, for the assembly was confused, and the more part knew not where, wherefore they were come together. And they drew Alexander out of the multitude, and the Jews putting him forward. And Alexander beckoned with the hand, and would have made his defense unto the people. But when they knew that he was a Jew, all with one voice about the space of two mm. hours cried out, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. You know, that crying out sounds to me like these days when the people get on the road with their placards. Oh, we yes. want justice. Yes. We want justice. <laughs> we want justice. But they were saying, Great is Diana. Yeah. So in other <laughs> words, while there were some who were excited about the God mm -hmm. of Paul, the true God and Jesus Christ, having now had a riot, the other people who were now faithful followers of the pagan God were crying out the name of the pagan right. God. But, the, but, but the, the, the riot started because of the silversmith. Yeah. yeah. Because he was losing business. That's right. The people having turned to Jesus, now they were not buying up all these little shrines <laughs> exactly. and these little, you know, symbols of yes. this great goddess Diana yes. anymore. <laughs> mm -hmm. So he stirred up the people. Mm -hmm. Of course. Of course. And listen to me. You see when Satan ready to stir up a <laughs> group of people? He knows how to knows do it. How. He and knows how to do it. We have to be, we have to be um, knowledgeable of this fact. You will never do God's work without some objection or some battle against the enemy. J just read that last section there for me, Pastor Sunlin, 38 to 41, how this thing went on. Wherefore, if Demetrius and the craftsmen which are with him have a matter against any man, the law is open, and there are deputies... Let them implead one another. But if he inquire anything concerning other matters, it shall be determined in a lawful assembly. For we are in danger to be called in question for this day's uproar, there being no cause whereby we may give an account of this concourse. And when he had thus spoken, he dismissed the assembly." So at least Paul presented Christ without interfering with what was happening. That's right. The message of Christ did the interference. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> and that is why the town clerk mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. able to take up for Paul, yes. as it were. Yes. He hasn't troubled you. Exactly. Why are you carrying on like this? Come on. Yes. Let's get back some order in this thing. Mm -hmm. right. I wish we had enough time to go through, but we don't have enough time. So let's run on and see what's happening in the next part of the reference we have there. Acts 20, verses 17 and 18, and 36 and 37. And it says, And from Miltus he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. And when they were come to him, he said unto them, He know, for the first day that I came into Asia, after what manner I have been with you at all time. And 36 declares, And when he had thus spoken, he knelt down and prayed with them, and they all wept sore and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him. So when Paul could not be face to face with the entire company of mm -hmm. believers, mm -hmm. he sent for the elders yes. and he had a lovely discourse yeah. with them. And yeah. it's interesting to note mm -hmm. that he couldn't do all of what he wanted to do and right. the, the parting was a sad one. Mm -hmm. yes. But it was yes. a good one mm -hmm. because Paul was confident that he had established something that was going to keep going mm, that's right. in Ephesus. Okay. I sound like I'm rushing, and I'm truly <laughs> rushing, because we have now to look at the letter to the Ephesians, hearing. Mm -hmm. Now, we are encouraged to read through the entire book of 
Ephesians. It's not a long book. It has only six little chapters. So I'm encouraging all of our viewers to make sure before you complete the study of this particular lesson that you read through the entire chapter because that chapter gives us several pointers, themes that you know, are expressed there that we will follow through. In fact, the guide lists 13 of them in all. So you will read through the chapter and you'll see the different themes which will be dealt with in more detail as we go through the study of this book. But I want you to go now and to look at Ephesians chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you, and peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. We are thinking now about Ephesians in its time. Ephesians referring to the book of Ephesians. Mm -hmm. All right. That was the beginning of Paul's letter. Let's go to the very end of the letter and see what he has to say there in chapter 6, verses 21 to 24. But that he also may know my affair and how I do Tychius, a believer, brother, and faithful minister in the Lord, should make known to you all things, when I have sent unto you for the same purpose, that he might know our affairs, and that he might comfort your heart. Peace be to the brethren, and love with faith, for God the Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace be with, with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. And Mary amen. <laughs> amen. <laughs> is there anything we see in the introduction of the book that we are also seeing in the closure, the conclusion mm -hmm. of the book? He, he, he continues with this, he, well, he began with the point of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. he, he mentions himself as an apostle of Jesus Christ. And he's writing to these saints and he's talking about the grace and the peace. And, and he normally ends his letter with the same kind. Grace be to you yes. and peace from our Lord Jesus Christ. And um, it's, it's, it's like his trademark. Mm -hmm. He's always talking about the grace of God and he's wishing peace for the believers. Pastor? When you look at it, you know, Paul says, and he said, but he also may know the affairs. And then he went on to talk about, you know, the, the, the Jesus Christ. He says, uh, um, he says, a beloved bro brother. And then he says, whom I have sent unto you. And then he says, Pe peace be unto you, brethren, and love with faith. So Paul greeted the brethren and he was encouraged them in grace and faith. Because when it comes to the end, you know, it's all about Christ and his grace and his love. So as I said before, that Paul wanted to reignite re them, their faith. He wanted to push them out. He's like he was a coach now, coaching them. Because he knew that, you know, the, the society, the environment is of such that it will draw them away from Christ. So you want to encourage them back. And so he, he, speak, he spoke about the grace of God and the love of Jesus Christ to them. So as we look at the beginning and the end there of the book, we are seeing, as you have justly said, gentlemen, that Paul is emphasizing Jesus in the lives of mm -hmm. the Ephesians. That's right. It's Jesus all the way. Check through as you go through the middle, you're going to find that emphasis as well. And he, you know, he, he goes on with this because the, the lesson refers to a Christ-saturated letter. Mm -hmm. Everything that is there is about Christ. Everything resides in Christ. The, the, there is nothing else that he's presenting to these brethren but Christ. Yes. And it is important, as you have hinted, 
Pastor Mort, that, you know, he should keep this before the brethren all the time mm -hmm. because of the nature of the setting mm -hmm. in which he was. Mm -hmm. Because in Ephesus, he had some very sophisticated people there. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. They were yes. mixed up in all sorts of things, all That's sorts right. of doings. Mm -hmm. They were not poor people in mm -hmm. general. Mm -hmm. You will find the yes. poor everywhere, but yeah. in general, yes. Ephesus was a very rich yeah. city. Yes. It, was, it was a port city. Mm -hmm. It was where all of the, the trading and the mm -hmm. commerce and the mm -hmm. everything and all sorts mm -hmm. of things going on. Right. So he had to keep Christ before, before them, before them. Yes. all the time yes. when he was with them and when he was writing to them. Yes. Yes. It's a beautiful setting that we have here that we're going to be studying. And we're going to be having a little bit more time to go through sections of this in more detail. Mm -hmm. But for right now, I just want you to look at the overall introductory lesson that we have had and give me your closing views on this matter. Well, you know, as, as, as I look at Paul's letter to the Ephesians, mm -hmm. um, he's writing to them to encourage them in the Lord. And, and in a mixture of multicultural beliefs and lifestyle, yes. it's not easy for Christian to be faithful in those times. Because uh, remember that the, the major religion was pagan. Mm -hmm. and, and it was, it was uh, a part of the, 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 not only the, the pagan leaders that were living there, but people were coming in from other places and falling into the same kind of situation. So the believers really had a challenge. And in these times, we're finding that we're in a mixture of all of this. We have to encourage our brothers and sisters to be faithful amidst all of what you see and not to be distracted, That's right. but to focus on Jesus Christ. Thank you so much. Now, Paul was, you know, in prison, in the house prison, and he loved the brethren so much you know, of Ephesus that he took his pen and he took the time to write unto them. As the lesson declared that he was an evangelist, he ministered to them in the city. And now he was away. And the only way he could now minister is to take his pen and encourage them in the faith. And you know, this is saying also that there's a God that love us and that he looked after us, that he will use all, you know, you know all media and media, media to, to reach us and to encourage us in the faith because what we need, you know, is to stay on board. We don't need to jump out with us. From once we stay on board, it will be well. And that's what Paul was saying, stay on board. Right, and as we end the thought of a Christ-saturated letter, we are referred to our memory text, which is Ephesians chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. Yes. So let's just read that together again in closing off. It says, Making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to unite all things in him, things in, in heaven, heaven and, and things, things on, on earth. earth. Viewers, whether you are a church member or you're not a church member, whether you have the Sabbath School Quarterly Outline or you don't have it, whether you're joining us for the first time or you have always been with us, we present to you all Jesus. And let this be your focus as we continue to study this very special set of lessons. So we invite you to join us next time when we meet for the Bible study hour. And we say to you, God bless you. God take care of you. God keep you through the week. And we meet again next time. Thanks to the pastors who have joined with me to go through this study with you. Thanks to our sponsors. Thanks to our technicians. Thanks to everyone, but we say thanks to God as you now join us in our closing prayer. Eternal Heavenly Father, we want to say thank you. We want to praise you because you are the God that ministers to our souls. And we know that this lesson will speak to our hearts. So Father, even as we shared the lesson, we ask you to allow your word to take hold of the viewers 
and that they will determine to follow you. May you bless them, may you cause your face to shine upon them and be gracious unto them. And we look towards a day when we are going to see our Lord and Savior, not in this sinful environment, but on the sea of glass. Bless us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.